Hey, man. What's up? Don't be a dummy. Why? Get your GED. Mm. You got your GED? I, I, I got a regular diploma. You got a diploma? I went on with the Yeah, I graduated. I got a GED. Jed, you got a GED? My boy. Hey, get every dollar. Hustlers. Yeah, you oh, got to get every GED, dollar. Man. Yeah, no, man. Now you want one. I didn't yeah. want one. Huh? I'm, G I'm, G I'm G and E D. Out here. All right, well, just take a class. Or. Oh, you got a class? You can buy the hoodie or the shirt or the hat. Mm. Merchforhire.com. That's merch, the number four, H I G H E R.com. And that's higher quality. Not higher merch quality. does not come with any dollars. It just does. FYI. It kind of does. I think it do, bro. Motivation okay. Motivation for you to get dollars, I think. All right, yeah, but you yeah. got to get your own dollars. Oh no, no. But problem. get all of them. Every. Every one. We on again. We on again. I hope you listening closely. You listening we doing our own thing, our own but thing. we doing this for the coach. Check out the topic. Check out the topic. Don't be the subject. Don't be the subject. We keep it pop. Hey, we keep it pop. You can be up next. Hey, you can be up next. We are. More than culture, 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 more than culture. More than culture. We are more than culture, more than culture. The thing is, he's not as good as a rapper as the other two. Yeah, all right, that's probably what it but is. If you never heard them niggas, then that nigga's good. Right. He's good. He's he got can, great ad-libs. Produce the fuck out of some We're shit. We're ad-lib man. town, guys. We like ad-libs. Yeah. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Boom, and they play. all for this. Shout out to Griselda. Y'all yeah, niggas all graduated yeah, yeah. in '98 oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure of it. Shout out to y'all. The code. It was like you can have lyrics if you want, or, or. you can just make sounds. <laughs> <laughs> sounds <laughs> sounds with your face. That will pay the same. Come on, man. <laughs> that goes back face. to the, our roots, though. You know, sounds of songs, and you know, I mean, it wasn't so much as lyrics. You know, it in wasn't. Africa, it was the beat. It's your spirit. Oh, you're the talking vibes. about a and a huh, and a hey, yeah, and a hey, and a hey, hey. Hey, hey, okay. This is how all the Lifesavers commercial was in the 80s. Remember them African dudes was on everything in the 80s? I just watched, I showed my kids Moonwalker for the first time. They was oh, amazed. Man. My son was like, Michael Jackson is a car? I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. sure you. You ain't know that. Yeah, you ain't know. Panther. <laughs> See, I don't do that with my kids, man. You don't take them back? With my, with my son, he five, so it's still, you got to remember, like, we gotta respect the fact that CGI is fucking good. They now. got a lot. Right. They cartoons look better. He thinks Jurassic Park. He, the moment he thought Jurassic Park was real, I was like, eh, "Can't watch it no more." Yeah, right. We gotta circle back when you sit. Keep it a buck though. Yeah, you ain't ready. I left the movie theater from Jurassic Park looking for dinosaurs the first time. Not gonna lie, and I drove. <laughs> <laughs> So don't blame your five year old son for that, nigga. That shit was they scary. They did really well. I ain't gonna lie. Great I went to my closet to look at ET twice. <laughs> nigga, I used to I, lay recent pieces by the door. Oh man, Avatar had me in magic. This nigga wanted like a friend. <laughs> nigga was so shit, alone, bro. Reese's pieces. Yeah, ain't seen your mama's closet. Reese's pieces. Some Reese's pieces. You know how fast Reese's pieces, pieces melt, nigga. It's so hard being an only child, bro. She oh, was waiting on ET. This nigga was looking for an yeah. alien. Had a homeboy right across the street. <laughs> yeah, I was in Magic City looking for an Avatar bitch. Like, it's got to be one of these six, eight. <laughs> with blue bitch. With the plug in. With the blue bitch. Get one of these chest the, <laughs> Yeah, she got the, the ponytail linked to the charger. She got a block on that bitch. More than culture is the brand. <sighs> This is the More Than Culture Show. Come yeah. on, the Secret Genius. Remo Rod. Tyler Chronicles. Ronnie Jordan. Yes, yes sir. Hey, we are here, Ronnie. man. We are here at Mixed Haberdashery. Shout out to Haberdashery. my boy Griff. Griff. It's a cultural space uh, slash pew, pew, good pew. store, man. He has a uh, just be a good person. So yeah. we here. We're going to start moving More Than Culture all around the city. We're on Ponce right now. You can't get no more Atlanta than this. But I got yeah. my partner from Birmingham in the house, fresh off Comedy Central. He's on his tour right now. He got so many credits, I ain't going to list him. Mm -hmm. But he didn't got me every radio job I ever got in my life. That's so right. so. Yeah. Yeah. Birmingham's on. We got Roy Wood Jr. Yeah. on the culture. He's here. He's here, sir. I appreciate it. God damn it, Roy. This is worth the risk of COVID. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Off the top. I be, no, I'm serious. You. I be like mitigating like, all right, is them niggas worth dying? <laughs> Everybody, and I, and I fuck with them. I, I appreciate right, you right, bringing your right, lessons right. over here. Yeah. It's an honor and a privilege. Yeah, yeah man. man. To kill Roy. Yeah, we don't want to kill Roy. We can't kill Roy Wood Jr. We can't. That test would it be the headline. Week. Roy, you got you got a team of white people that's really looking at all the shit you do. So we can't. No, you, no. It's, it's a team of whites. Like, what is Roy? What's Roy Look, up to? I got I got the hour special coming out on October 29th. Yes, sir. We taped that in Denver. In a couple of days, and like, once I get past that, I don't give a fuck what t whatever <laughs> test you need me to take, bitch. I'll take it. I'm in the streets. Yeah, it's be like, 
you got COVID, I'd be like, hey, hey. That's how it happened. I already taped my special, though, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Specials in the can. Can we talk about, like, during the pandemic, man, you were one of the comics that kind of was like, yo, the comics is out of work. We got to do something. Like, you got the whole industry in, like, a... They they had a program or whatever. You guys did like a charity event and a telethon yeah, yeah, and raised money. And then there was um, comic, Comedy Gives Back. And that was another uh, telethon we did. Um, it wasn't just me. It was a gang of motherfuckers who helped organize that shit. But that was to get money in the hands of working road comedians. Which, if you were a road comic out there and you still down bad, you can still apply for the grant. They I went. Five, I did. I didn't get it. They put in five, six. How you ain't get it? Posting all them shows on Instagram. <laughs> 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 nigga, you at Grambling tonight. They do, <laughs> but they did. They did vet because like it was motherfuckers coming out the woodwork. Like, of course, yeah, I do comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I didn't apply. I, I didn't want to take it away from somebody that really. You know what I'm saying? If I was fucked up, I just know how it is. Right. When but it's still money yourself. there, man. If it's if you're a road comic, and I mean you should be able to prove you done comedy in the last couple years before yes. the pandemic. It was, right. the, the rule was basically. If you had dates on the books in 2020, mm, and you could prove you had a date on the books. Just send 17 flyers with your face. <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah. what was you yeah. shooting? When, did, were you shooting anything right when it shut down? Because all of us was in the midst of just big shit. Well, I mean, Ronnie finna be so We big. was at Viacom like, deep pussy nigga. <laughs> Ronnie ain't got no shirt on. Damn. I'm standing on the desk. I done broke two desks in Viacom. You got Jesse we, Collins in there with nah, us kicking <laughs> shit over. I had a... <laughs> We was mapping out our shit bro, on these niggas. Malcolm X's birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Malcolm X's birthday. You like me. Eddie and Martin in life where the white dude said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get you free in the morning. You know, yeah, so that's exactly. Died that's on the ship. Maybe. Goddamn. <laughs> Juneteenth Tyler. <laughs> I got your check tomorrow, young blood. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. That's, that's a great description. We got the plane niggas had on masks. We're like, masks? I was on the plane with me and damn fool only on the Delta flight. I said, what the fuck happened? The world stopped. <laughs> the world stopped. Me and Dad, they, what's up, nigga? He had a bandana on. I had a ski mask on. That's all I had. Damn it. I had, a, um, I had a sitcom in the mix, man. It wasn't, mm. we had already shot the first, it was that probation pilot where I played yeah, the probation the, officer in yeah, Birmingham. in Birmingham, man. And so they wasn't feeling the first one, so they gave me a new writer, a new producer, whatever. And so we was in the middle of, we was going to shoot that bitch again. Like, we was getting ready to start man. casting that. And Another then time. shut down hit. Then, this is how I got really fucked in the game. I had a sitcom. It was going to go. Shutdown hits. And then Viacom merges with CBS. Then COVID hits. And Viacom and CBS have layoffs. Everybody that was overseeing my scripted project, Mm -mm. gone. Mm -hmm. Then, because the money, the church's money is all fucked up for the past year, it costs too much to create scripted content. We've changed our creative strategy as an operation. So now we will move on to unscripted and animation only. And if you ain't unscripted or animated or previous IP like Beavis and Butthead or Mm -hmm. fucking Wildin' Out, like anything that's already been cooking. Get your monkey ass the <laughs> fuck out of this building. <laughs> Take your script Bro. with you. Oh, Daily Show, you good. Come on back, Roy. Sorry, yeah, you're yeah, still yeah. on the Daily Show. <laughs> <laughs> Rubs on the woo. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if it was scripted, they killed it, man. Yeah, that's what happened with uh, the show I was it. writing for with uh, Yamanika. It was right on the verge, and that via Viacom, CBS merger hit. It was over. They with. chopped everybody's everybody head off. Go. And yeah. it's wild because that's the second time I've been through that shit. It was the same shit over at TBS back in 2015. They got a new colonel. And he just came in. I give him credit. He canceled everybody. Yeah, he did. So at least you got to play. It's like when a new coach come in, fuck all the assistants. Right, right. Yeah. Well, he kept the white boys, though, um, to do the pranks. The uh, un- jackass? Impractical no, no, jokers. Impractical jokers. No, they have. Oh, they yeah, yeah. Like yeah a, that's, that's true, though. They shut down comic They were too big to shit. fail. They have, yeah. like, a whole cruise. Yeah, they too big to fail. Do you know, I met them, man, and what's fucking interesting about them practical jokers, man, is that they figured out a way. To, if you really watch that show and study what they do, they just fucking with each other in public. That's it. The people ain't really, like, yeah. it's, they're there and you need their reaction for the right. comedy of right. it. But, but it's fucking brilliant because they ain't got to fucking, it don't matter what you do. Right. I'm going to be over here acting a fucking fool I in this grocery store. Just sign this waiver. Just sign this waiver. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's easy to do that shit around white people because th- if we tried that in our yeah. parts, what we be at? It's a Bro, good I, chance right. to be shot or slapped. Yeah. Nigga, I, more p- security. I pitched a sketch <laughs> and we couldn't shoot it because I couldn't figure out how to make it political. <laughs> 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 but I pitched a sketch of Trevor into the producers called Emblactical Jokers. <laughs> 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 and it's four niggas 
who just go out and fuck with people. But after each so sketch, funny. one of them get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of it, it's just one nigga and he nervous. <laughs> Uh, that's <laughs> political as fuck. <laughs> 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 no, but it's Viacom. They broke, nigga. It's post COVID. They don't. It oh. costs too much money to shoot that's all of that hilarious. shit. Yeah, I'm about to say you gotta catch people in the voting line. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> you get arrested. You will get arrested in voting line. Yes, yeah, shit. We, maybe we need to shoot that in Georgia. To yeah. win these Man, laws and, especially yeah. here, yeah, yeah. Georgia and Florida. They I, got, I know. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be bouncing around, but I, I heard, I heard you on a podcast. And you were talking about your father. He was like a. a Reporter, he, yeah, he civil, civil rights, rights, civil rights stuff. Yeah, you dude. had to read papers. Uh, he every was morning? He, your father yeah. was in uh, Lovecraft Country. They, no, the no, the Soul Train, the Soul oh. Train, American Soul, American, American Soul. Soul. I'm sorry, yes, I yeah. watched that. Yeah, Please my pops, he was depicted in it. Yeah, no, so my pops, episode? man, he um, I think episode eight or nine. So my dad was like the first black radio. He did like a lot of voice shit at a lot of stations and shit back in like the 50s and shit. And then he just started doing the assignment. Pretty much wherever racism was happening, my dad would just pull up with a fucking tape recorder. And so he was, he was saying, everywhere. You're a nigger. He's just like, he wait a minute. Very busy. busy. Yeah. He was busy as hell. They shot a big nigger in there with a hard R in the cloud. New, new on face of the 50s. The new face. <laughs> 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 So, Soweto riots in South Africa. My pops was there. Wow. The Rhodesian Civil War in oh, literally Africa. Everywhere. Yeah, that like was in the Civil War. It's, it's Zimbabwe now, but like at the time, like my pops was like like anything happening in the diaspora. My pops was there, man. He went to Vietnam on purpose. <laughs> And embedded with black platoon, the ones that they were sending in for aid, uh, yeah. sending the niggas, let them get shot yeah. up, and then what? He My went daddy and was laid with in that. the Agent Orange yeah. with a tape recorder. Yes, <sighs> your dad had the first so. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We put live in the foxhole. These niggas busting. <laughs> wow, he is black media royalty. Oh, Shout out so, to pops. So for the American Soul shit, what happened? Vietnam is my pops gets to Chicago and he's the first news director of something called the National Black Network, which is basically black CNN at the time. And so it's like boss up back then, right? Yeah, it was <laughs> real talk. BNN. That, like it's BNN. funny, but that's BNN. they was just talking about here's what's happening to black our people. Our people yeah. It was black Twitter. And so that was on WVON. And so Don Cornelius was one of the first reporters oh, that wow. worked at WVO before Soul Train, before he got into TV. Right. And so Don Cornelius used to be a police officer, and he pulled my daddy over. I'm like telling the story because I know this nigga. <laughs> so I'm just say, Don Cornelius pulled my father over on the way to work. <laughs> made him unscramble. And my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dad ran a red. My dad ran like a stop sign or some shit. And Don time. Cornelius pulls him over, and my daddy just looked at Don. Uh, this is how he started the conversation during the traffic stop. He says, "Sir, you have a nice voice." <laughs> <laughs> You remember that episode? Uh, license and registration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they depicted that moment because that moment is what got Don Cornelius down that road into media mm -hmm. and all of that shit. And so cop, that's how you get out all these tickets, though. He did, that's what they didn't take. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, you have a vo <laughs> nice voice, ma'am. Hey, that's the same shit that happened to Rick Ross. Your vocals? <laughs> your throat? Fuck you. <laughs> hey, Remo, what? Hey, your vocals, my boy? Hey, Remo, say it again. That's the same shit that happened to Rick Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I heard your demo. <laughs> Go ahead and stop coing. <laughs> Get stop <up>. coing. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the trap, be somebody. Turn in your uniform so, and get to the booth. Oh shit! Yeah, my pops had a chance to buy in a soul train off the top. Oh man, he was what? a uh, he was a investor. He was one of the first investors in Soul Train, man. and Don was going around collecting money from his partners to shoot the pilot. And he shot the pilot, then he couldn't sell it initially. Like nobody would carry the shit or whatever. My dad, in the meantime, was like, "Nigga, I need my money back." And it wasn't even, a, it's like a thousand dollars, but this is like in the 50, 60, yeah. 60, 60, that's right. a lot of money, a thousand dollars. That's like a yeah. hundred. Yeah, it's like a brick hundred bands. That's at least that's 10. 10. <laughs> what was a brick in 68? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. You had to buy it from a whole lot of niggas. <laughs> that's a whole brick of scabble dabble, friend. Scabble dabble, friend. Come on, baby. It's heavy work. Yo, you and fucking Don, up the band rock. <laughs> And Don Cornelius come back to my pops and he go, yo, man, look, I know you fucking want your bread. I don't know how these niggas talk, but listen here, cat Dig daddy. Slick it down. Slick it down. And he said, let me make you a producer on Soul Train. Wow. 
and you and, your, and I just don't owe you, and you'll get a piece of this. And my pops told Don Cornelius, and I quote, don't nobody want to watch niggas dance for an hour. <laughs> End quote. Good quote. That's a great quote. <laughs> At so that sure. time, give me, <laughs> give me my sure. money. <laughs> give me me, bro. A piece he said, of nothing you got to have me my fucking money, man. <laughs> and Don Cornelius paid him back. My pop signed away, and that was that. Damn, I couldn't even watch Soul Train. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you couldn't have equity. Was, that's, that's the one thing I give my daddy. My daddy was, it was time to hate. That motherfucker turned it on. <laughs> it was time to hate. <laughs> he didn't hate a lot of people, but... If he Roy felt some don't kind of way, nobody want to see no niggas <laughs> dancing <laughs> for an hour. Cut that fucking TV off. Well, Roy's like, I do it. Like, I like <laughs> yeah. it. I you got to look at where my pops was coming from. My pops just came from Rhodesia. My pops just came from South Africa. My pops yeah. just came from Vietnam. He just seen black folks in the worst of shit. Right. And some nigga come to you going, what if just black that people dancing? Motherfucker, we're at war. <laughs> nigga. Don't nobody want to watch this shit. Fuck. King just got shot. Yeah. Give me my money. <laughs> Give me my bread, King bro. just got shot. King just bro. got shot. He didn't know the That's 70s the was coming. He couldn't see. It's Bitcoin. That was fucking black yes. Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin man. in 09. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Damn. Shit. Speaking of uh, getting every, you know, money and getting every dollar, merch for hire, please go on right now. We got all of our gear on Come there. On, Get every man. dollar. Yo, today, bro. Uh, I got them all the on here sometimes. Yep. Get on yourself. All, all on there, man. Right now, merch the number four, H I G H E R dot com. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. So, listen, when you look at your Wikipedia and found out that you were uh, an American humorist, how did that make you feel? <laughs> I don't know who wrote that. <laughs> American that make it seem humorist. like I write columns. I said, who the fuck thought of this? <laughs> Somebody but from the you New know Yorker. What? But it's better than what it was before the Daily Show. It just said American disc jockey. I'm like, bitch, I do stand up. And I and I tried to correct it, and then somebody corrected it back and then left a note. <laughs> prove it. I'm like, oh, oh, you can say wow. prove it on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, w- Wikipedia, when they change your shit, they go, that claim was removed because it was unsubstantiated. I'm like, you could have Googled, ho. Yeah, I, done all I the just came back specials. from Top Flight. This whole <laughs> website is unsubstantiated. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> this is all hearsay. This is a hearsay website. Right. Show me. The best you can do on Wikipedia is hope that they use a, de- a decent picture of you. Right dog. on. Because mm. they be, man, it's some motherfuckers on Wikipedia. They be playing them, dog. Man. Man. How far did your radio go back? Was it Southern when you when you started your radio yeah, career? Yeah, I started 01 when I came out of FAMU. So oh, okay. I had an intern. You know, I interned or whatever in college. But yeah. then I started at 95.7 in Birmingham when Ricky, when Ricky Smiley left to go to Dallas. Mm. To start what what he has today, I came in behind Ricky, and I was the dude that replaced Ricky. And you know how Birmingham is. That first year, yeah, was, but you ain't no goddamn work. Ricky. What right. the, where they, the pranks at? But he was Roy was doing pranks though that Roy was going was, crazy. But you know what I had to do though, and this is the first. This was one of the first comedy lessons I learned was I had to get rid of any comparisons to Ricky. So I can't do no voices that Ricky do, mm-hmm. no old ladies, no rednecks. Like just. Whatever Ricky had made, like, canon, I had to just come from a totally different perspective. So mm-hmm. I couldn't, like, copycat him or whatever. But, right. you know, I give Ricky all the love in the world, man, because he really, he was the first, he was the first nigga from Birmingham on cable that, like, where you saw him and you're like, oh, shit, I can do it. Yeah, and, and he read Birmingham, know, when you too. From, when you from, really like, really. y'all say in the A, the parts say disregard, <laughs> and you ain't seen nobody do the shit. You don't even know whether or not it's even capable. Man, I was a fucking family in the dorm, and that motherfucker did that. My name, Lil Daryl, shit. Man. Boy, that shit Ooh. rung <laughs> off. My name it, the it, whole it. school the next day, wherever you was at. <laughs> and if you did it the best, <laughs> you was the one. You no, was actually Lil Daryl. That was <laughs> the DC Young Fly, fuck you mean. Mm-hmm. Fuck you mean. Of 97. No, that's yes, sir. It was. And that shit fucking changed everything. Oh, so when I came into a radio station, you know, I'm trying to do pranks, but then I got it to do parody songs and weird commercials. Like, So you had to kind of figure out a different way to connect with the people yeah. in a way that mm-hmm. Ricky didn't do it. Because that first year, boy, I mean, did I tell you the, the Apollo story? No, what happened? Oh, shit. So my first, me, so, me, me, me. So my first TV <laughs> credit was Showtime at the Apollo Comedy TKO. Ooh. That's when they be head to head with comedians, right? Which is fair, because you didn't put comedians in amateur night, which I always hate it, because the nigga ain't going to be the singer. Jokes yeah. will never beat singing. Never. And you're not going to be the kid. 
So and you're not gonna be gospel. gospel music. <laughs> you're never, never gonna, gonna be, be gospel. Jesus. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Jesus now, runs Harlem. It's been enough black people singing gospel on all these different talent shows that now we'll we'll kind of boo Jesus. We'll yeah, we'll get him. Jesus get a little boo. Oh, well, he'll get stalled out. Yeah, like, we'll stall <laughs> Jesus out. Stall him out, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> fucking arm fold Jesus. No, you see Yolanda Adams just looking at your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know that wasn't that run. That run was not Jesus though, y'all. Yeah, I so I do comedy TKO. And I play it all the way wrong. <laughs> and for the folks who don't remember, or just never saw this shit, it was two comedians, you both got three minutes. And it's me, and shout out to the homie Dexter Angry. It's Dex Dexter Angry. Dexter Angry from Florida. Down in Miami. Miami, yeah. And so Dex go up, kill it. But he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Fucking hopscotch, joke to joke. Don't stay in one pocket too long. Just fucking stick and move, stick and yeah. move. My goofy ass get out there, think I'm gonna just do one subject. Yeah. For three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> now you're supposed to do three minutes. Somewhere around two minutes, 37 seconds. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it starting to happen. And, and, bubbling. and the thing with the Apollo is that <laughs> like, like the lenses that they use to shoot Showtime at the Apollo, it makes you think this room is bigger than oh, what it small. is, but it's very fucking small. It's a yeah. very shallow room. Like it's like the width of like a high school basketball court. Like you can see the facial expressions of everybody. <laughs> all the way to the back. All the way to the boot. top. Yeah. <laughs> They're no further away from you than a nigga on the other side of a basketball court. And it's three level, three tiers. So you can see every face. They connect your soul. To, they connect with yeah, your Yeah, they avatar fucking <laughs> ponytail. <laughs> and I can feel it. I can feel the booze starting to happen. And I just finished a joke. And in my head, I'm like, all right, I got, I got 40 seconds left. This joke is 30 seconds. I know they're not going to let me finish this joke. <laughs> so I can leave now and just do all right. Or I can continue and take my boo like a fucking man. Okay. Mm. And I said, good night, Apollo. Yeah, I know that's fucking hey. right. Let's get the good fuck night, out of there. Apollo. And I fucking turn. <laughs> and on the side of the stage is Ben Hill. Ben Hill is the producer of the Apollo. And Ben Hill is like waving Hill, at me. They're like, ben stay really. out there. Stay out there. You, Because right. I'm fucking up the time of the show. The host walking back up oh. there. Yeah. The pants up Rudy, Rush, <laughs> Rudy Rush. Rudy Rush. Rudy Rush wasn't even ready. Kiki Shepard wasn't ready. Nobody was the fucking same man. The same man trying to find his shoes. Where's my shoes? God damn it. Where's my broom man? Ben Hill was trying to get me to stay out there to get booed. And I'm like, no, bitch, you can't fucking trick me. And I fucking <laughs> walked off. And then walk right by him. But here's here's the <laughs> fucked up part. You still gotta go back out there they to get, get Kiki Shepard. Yeah. You gotta get uh, Kiki Shepard. They got a boo waiting on you. They yeah, got they, seconds. So they that boo you that ran boo been from is still waiting it's for still you. Waiting been waiting been on sitting on in the brine. It's in the pot. <laughs> Not in the chamber. Should have took my shit like a man. And I fucking go back out there. They put their hand over Dex anger. Oh my God! Kiki put their hand over me. <laughs> <laughs> That's noise, though. They made noise. They asked for noise. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> so that Sunday night, it aired, it aired oh, that Sunday night. Monday morning, I go into the radio station, and do my job. At this point, I think I've been on in place of Ricky maybe four months. All I'm doing is pranks. I really ain't getting a lot of mic time yet because you ain't proving. You know how it is in radio early on. They sit you in the corner like a little brother. Come on, man. Main man doing the shoot. They ask you your opinion once every two hours. What do you think, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Using that bitch, trying not to fall asleep. Correct. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker called the station. This is unsolicited. We ain't brought up Apollo. We ain't said nothing about Showtime with the Apollo <laughs> on the air. Unsolicited. Just a nigga just called the station. 957, what's up? Man, where wood at? Oh. <laughs> hey, yo. Nigga just got back from New York. <laughs> where wood? I heard about your boo, nigga. I said, I'm right here. <laughs> Man, I just want to say, man, me and the family, man, we saw you on the Apollo, man, representing the crib, man. I just want to tell you, man, you let Birmingham down. <laughs> <laughs> we were all rooting for you. Did not. That's the title <laughs> of the episode. You let Birmingham down. This this said, I just want to let you know you let Birmingham down, man, and this is what you got to understand, Wood. This is what you got to understand, man. They don't fuck with Birmingham like that. They don't fuck with Alabama like that. When you get on, nigga, you got to put on for Alabama because Alabama got to fucking win, and anybody that's on for Alabama got to fucking kill that shit, and you ain't kill it until you're ready to kill it, nigga. Just tell everybody you from Montgomery. And <laughs> click. And he hung up the phone. On the game. Damn. <laughs> on the game. Dump button. Dump Boy. this. I got go, 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 go. Dump this call. They aired it. Of course. They aired That's it. That's great radio. You ain't Ricky Smiley, nigga. <laughs> 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 they ain't finna air this coding content. 
but it was a valuable fucking lesson though because he's right man when you from a fucking place that they ain't expecting nobody to shake shit when you get on you gotta fucking go crazy you gotta fucking go crazy man and it's the only like time somebody said some hate shit to me where where like in the moment i was like ah you remember that shit verbatim. That's oh, yeah. to yes, the day. Exactly. We 20 years later. Like, I got that monologue. Like, yeah. Hey, what would it? You say this shit like Shakespeare. It? You was in the corner and <laughs> shit. 95, 7. Man, what would it? Like, I know that nigga in there. <laughs> Tell he him to come to the microphone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to That's a part it. of the biopic. Did you have to answer back or anything? They just let him say it and just let it go just on? with the commercial. That's it. Did it go straight into the 411 And now traffic. Yeah. And now traffic. Man, man, man. That's hilarious. We went shit in New York, man, but it's <laughs> and you know what's so hell. fucked up about black radio, man? <laughs> Somebody call in and talk shit to you, then black women will call and uplift you for the next hour. There you go. Nigga ain't air none of them calls. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I want to speak to Roy. <laughs> Hello, it's baby. all right, baby. You like did okay. They just mad because they wasn't on TV. And yeah. if you keep at it one day, <laughs> one day. We gotta find this nigga on Facebook, bro. Let him know you, you know what I mean? You represent for Birmingham. No, but that's, but ever since then, back. I'm right. like, all right, man, if right. I fucking go for Birmingham. Gout, bitch ass nigga. <laughs> No, you got gout. Nigga. You in Birmingham still, nigga? Yo, man. I, <laughs> everybody talk about New York, man, but I honestly feel like the South will mold you, bro. The South will yeah. fucking mold you the same way, but there's still a hug on the other side of that shit. I don't know if it's a hug. I can't speak on New York, but I know every time I done bomb. You was talking about top flight earlier. Motherfucker, I bombed there. Tallahassee. I, dog, <laughs> I used to take the Greyhound. I used to fucking hop the dog on a fucking Saturday night to come to Atlanta. Eight hour ride, Hot get dropped dog. off dog, downtown, so funny. take the Marta all the way out Disgusting. to motherfucking Buckhead. <laughs> Go get booed <laughs> on the Sunday night. <laughs> on Sunday night. Fucking Nard Holston. This is back in the Nard Holston uh, era. Nard. Sunday Nard. night. Nard. We just had him Yeah. Yes, get booed. Walk over to Puffy's restaurant. Justin. Justin's Just, right, Just, right there in the same parking lot. Or this did not listen to. Ask for a water. Find out the water is $8. Leave. <laughs> Bo Boss. <laughs> Was they doing comedy there? Though? No, that oh, was okay. where I went to go, like, be sad after bombing. They <laughs> got sadder. They got sadder. He got sadder. wanted to drink a Moscow mule comfort. by himself. <laughs> I tried to just sit at the bar and, like, I'm waiting on somebody, like, baby, okay. you got to order something. You're going to be in yeah, here. They were doing comedy in Justin's for a little minute, I, and, but that's probably after you was gone by then. But that shit was a jungle, like a motherfucker. Yeah, I didn't want no parts yeah, of that shit. Yeah, the old uptown was up in the top part right in front of justice yeah. but see what i try what i try to tell at. the whole be a members in there sunday i got booed by him i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> like i try to tell man these young comics so man you can't run from the bomb man and the thing about it is that nobody's gonna remember it mm. that's the that's the beauty of bombing is that it's just hey not tonight when but not, come back next week, yeah, and we will judge you anew. Man. We got the yeah. only job that's like that, though. Yeah, the only job where people judge you as a person off of your job. Like if you do bad one night, people like just spread away from you. Like, yes, like, talk to you like you oh, really yeah. got COVID. Like yeah, a long time ago. Like oh no, nah, but yeah, you learn how to have a thick skin. You got to treat yeah. that shit like throwing the interception, dog. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Nah, for real. But you you started with Ricky as well. Like could you talk about that? Because like we got like the origin stories over at the. Break win office and <laughs> shout yeah, out to Ricky. Ricky Ricky was like three, four years in before me. Like I started in ninety eight. I think Ricky was like ninety two ish, ninety three ish. Like whatever that last year Def Jam was before yeah, he was left on like snap and all snaps Correct. and all them yeah, shows. Yeah, he was yeah. on all that shit. Doing Martin. Yeah, but that was about ninety two. Oh well now because it might took over, right? Are you talking about Def Jam? Martin? No, Mike I'm Epps t- did Def Jam. It was Martin, Mike Epps. Uh, I want to say Joe Rick. Tory for Joe Tory. Martin. It was Joe Tory. Yeah. Martin, Joe Tory, Mike Epps. DL was the last. DL yeah, was the last one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Rudy Rush didn't do so? Rudy Rush hosted Apollo. He didn't oh, okay. host uh, Def Jam. Um, did he host Uptown Comedy Club? He did. Or was that Tracy like Morgan? That might have been Tracy Morgan. Yeah. I can't think of his name, but he hosted that shit. But nah, Ricky the South, Hill. man. What I figured out, though, the, the issue I had when I started, man, was this. I was like, I ain't gonna just work black rooms because it ain't enough money in that shit. Like, it's just like to to headline, like the politics of it. I was like, all right, if I'm gonna deal with politics, I'm gonna just deal with everybody's politics. And I'm gonna deal with it. So then I just started working white rooms, just wherever, whoever the fuck would put me on. And then you gotta figure out what joke and how to deliver it that it'll hit the same. 
and all them spots. And then really all the, all that shit boiled down to when you're trying to cross over some of your jokes, it's just tempo. You talk slow over white folks because they ain't got enough tempo black friends so they can't keep up with the speed. Yeah. And sometimes the slang word that you think is normal is not normal for them. Like, right. you know, oh. so one, and it's, one but you slang know what? Word. It's good to also be a teacher when you have white crowds. I got that from Clayton. Yeah. <laughs> he was it's like, you it's good to bring them, bring them in because <laughs> they want to know about our shit because they try to do everything we talk about and do. We are the like culture. TikTok yeah. is all full of white people doing black shit. Correct. Right. That's all it is. But, you know, I was going to say, like, um, on the inverse now, that, that, that the politics have changed, nigga. You got to... You got to send an email to these white clubs and then stand out front like fucking Hunger Games and hold your fingers up before they yeah. let you go in there and get time. But the black clubs, shit, you bombed every Sunday, but guess what? I got on every Sunday. Yeah, goddamn Sunday put you up. Every so, Sunday they yeah, put me on. Yeah, but I, I get what you mean, though. But not the black, hey, the black crowd's paying, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Shout, shout out to the black stream. Fuck the mainstream. They was not paying in 98, but not for a nigga like me. To also keep in mind, I was 19. I was wearing a suit so I could look 23. <laughs> Why'd you have so, on a You having a 19 year old Because I was 19 <laughs> when I was 19. You Uptown for on the bus, did you? <laughs> I did once. <laughs> <laughs> you took the Greyhound on the bus like you was going to a yeah. market. Yeah. Mar- <laughs> <Mar-Selva. laughs> hop the dog. Then, so nigga, hop the dog to go to a city. <laughs> nigga, I hopped the dog <laughs> and fucking. And this is how I tried to young, young up the suit a little bit for Uptown. No, don't put on a Nike I put a Nike hat. I put a Brave City. And then and niggas was clowning me. Nard went back up and clowned me for wearing a hat with a suit. And I'd be damn like two years later, Usher in that fucking yeah, yeah video. I'm like, bitch, nigga, I've been here. That shit. Hilarious. I had a hat on with a suit. See the young bloods. You see this smile. shit? Oh, the young bloods wear a suit. Nah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, hat and suit. Oh, cool. he can wear a hat with a suit, but I can't wear a fucking hat with a suit. Fuck y'all. Oh, Ti tips his hat. That's the difference. Yeah, oh my Still god. Suit. Yeah, like the everybody wore hats and suits. <laughs> You did it in 98. Hey, who the first nigga blazer, put a hat on bro. a suit? You James yeah. Thunder early. Who the first nigga throw a fitted hat on with a, with a suit? Me, nigga. That me, baby. That me, Ooh, baby. That's yeah. But yeah, you would call these fucking club owners, man. Who are you? Who vouch for you? Yeah. And then I just put them fucking white clubs. I figured out, all right, I'm going to just mail you a tape. I'm going to fax you. I'm going to email you. And I'm going to just fucking, like, white. what I learned, white clubs, it was consistent. Just You got to just be a pester. Black clubs, you got to have connects. So you got to build a relationship. To build a relationship, you got to hang out. And the only time I could hang out with black comics is when they came to play OS. And uh, when they came to play Top Flight, OS was in making. I would drive up to OS sometimes when Al Tillman was booking that shit. And so if I couldn't parlay and get in with a nigga at Top Flight, then ain't no way he going to vouch for me at OS or Comedy House Theater or Chuckles over in Memphis. Like I, like I, It was so many other fucking layers to black clubs that I just wasn't able to get through. As fast, I'm like, if I want to perform every week, right. it can't just be. And like, if you vouch for a nigga, he bomb. <laughs> your vouch is no good. So when you, w- yeah. when you first started, was your angle political and you know race based as well? What were you Hell doing back no, then? Bro. Oh. I ain't turning to my pops till like. <laughs> 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 uh, when you is you when you describe your pops, I'm like, damn, that's in you his know? set a yeah. lot. It, it, I, I can't even front like yeah. it, it's. I'm funnier than him. He was. <laughs> I guess I'm as angry yeah. as him, but it's just a different. Yeah, but you pose. ain't never seen a nigga get murdered like in the bush. Through yeah, the like for real. So, in the it's probably hard right. to be funny. Yeah. Like a nigga just, right. oh shit, snipers, snipers. Uh, yeah, for real. Yeah, in a real bush, he was yeah, in the yeah. shit. Charlie yeah. was on his ass. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> his camera up. Make sure they. Hey, I'm cameraman. Man. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, hold it. Media. His ta- his tape recorders. <laughs> he had no cameras. Yeah, tape, tape recorder. It's a gun. Pop, niggas. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. Nah, man, my early shit. I mean, I was 19. It was sex yeah, oh, and shit. roommate jokes and shit. Same yeah, shit I be doing You ever had a now, roommate? Man. I got a roommate eat that, half. That, day before yesterday. Me. Now, mind you, I'm performing for 50-year-old black niggas in kings of comedy suits in the audience. Real baggy attire. <laughs> Top yes. flight. Three piece. Top flight, you got to you gotta dress up. They gotta won't let the headliner up. in with tennis shoes on. Top flight I is all the black there, folks who couldn't afford a Tom Jordan cruise. <laughs> Boy, if you don't shut that, I say that with respect to Tom is, Jordan. With respect, shout out to Marvin Dixon because that they, they they all white party go up down. They pack it out. <laughs> we ain't talking about now. I'm talking about '98. Oh, okay. '98 top flight was a bunch of 50 year old black folks who ain't want to hear shit from no 19 year old. And my goofy ass on stage, yeah, man, folk book buyback, fucked up, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you write what you know. <laughs> <laughs> ain't it fucked up they charge 300 for a book, then they buy it back for six, bitch, what you, right. 
Nigga. We had an abacus. You ever had a roommate? I remember this joke. You ever had a roommate eat some of your food and then you can't enjoy it? Motherfucker, just eat all the food. <laughs> Don't just so eat funny. some of my food. That's so funny. I had a seven up. This nigga drank six of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. What? That was my closer. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. Ron. You selling that? I'm sitting. You selling in the, that? You, you <laughs> still got a roommate? I I'm sitting that. in the living room. Uh, what uh, up? It's three, was it's, it on TV? I got, 70, <laughs> I got seventy-five dollars on me right now. Come on. Everybody at this table got a college. This bitch a goat right what? now. That was <laughs> Hey, what a 90s beverage. Seven up. God Ooh, damn. Jesus bro. Christ. That's a seven up oh. joke is amazing. They was not fucking with it. They was not fucking with that. But so we bad. was crossing paths. I didn't even know. We was started like the same. Like you was a, you was ahead. I started like 01, but we would cross paths. But like later on in the radio game, you would just call me randomly. Hey, go down to go down on Peace Street. It's an audition for you for the radio station. Just go down there. Dude. Just do, just do an air check. Yeah, here. go do, Ronnie. Go do an air check, man. They yeah. they need a guy. They need a comic. Cause that radio <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> Radio, if you do it right and you do it well, is solid money and they give comedians flexibility to travel. And it's a very specific skill set to do radio. Like, it's not a lot of comedians that know how to be, you got to be funny and effective, but off the cuff. Like Low now. Key. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to do it within 30 to 90 seconds. 100% of the you time. You cannot be wordy. You have to fucking be exact and exactly Space what the joke point. is. Know what you're saying. Get in, get out. And not throw the rest of the show off track, and not have an ego about it either. Yeah. Yep. And it's certain. It's just you know what radio stations need and what they're looking for, and you just start going through your rolodex and motherfuckers go, "That nigga funny ain't got no ego," and he fucking. And that's how you fucking dominate radio. Mm-hmm. Shit, you can get you can go to the Hall of Fame still by passing the ball. And there's so many comedians that want to fucking be the one to dunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You ain't got it. Alley oops look nice. You throw them bitches up off the glass. It look crazy. Got you. Yeah, that it look shit, crazy. Man, radio is it's 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 very, very fucking hard, man. And the only thing harder than I think co hosting like terrestrial radio is promoting yourself on the radio. Because that's a separate skill set that I wish oh. You ever, you ever feel like with this with our generation, right? And I say this with respect to our OGs, but you ever feel like like, I wish there was, not a class, but, like, there's just certain basic technical aspects of the business that we were never taught, we were never told, and unless you shadow the nigga for a year because he let you open for him, you don't learn this shit, man. But, like, the one thing I learned, man, from all that time and mornings in Birmingham was watching niggas come in every Friday to promote themselves at the Stardom, and you could tell who had media training and who hadn't and knew how to sell themselves and sell their fucking comedy show. Yeah. And that's the that's the shit that I wish more black comics fucking understood, bro. The uh, I've had that happen to me once. I was at uh, 107.9. Ricky told me to come up there, and uh, Steve Harvey had just came to Atlanta. He said, come here, because I think I did Howard with him. He said, come here. When you get on that goddamn radio, you got to sell the fight, goddamn it, young blood. Like, he, he told me all the shit you're saying that niggas should tell. Steve Harvey put me aside, so you got this much time to be funny and sell your show. Fuck all that shit they talking about. Even he said, even if you gotta walk in there and get them bits to give you, yes. go in there like that. Like even you know, because Wanda Smith was real good at that. She'd be like, anything you want to lead into, for the uh, for your like, if you got a joke set up that she can do and lead you into it, right. she was real good at that. So yeah, it's too many comments that have come in when they was doing radio. At least back when Terrestrial was still, they won't even have my fuckers in in studio anymore now. But back in those days, they would come in and just goof off and fuck around. And just, what y'all want to talk about? No, nigga, you the one with the fucking show. Yeah. It's at any Get given time, it. at least in Birmingham, the cumulative listenership at any given time in the morning was 90,000 people. Damn. You have mm-hmm. the fucking undivided attention of 90,000 motherfuckers, come and on, all man. you need to do is convince 200 of them to come to your fucking show. Right. And you have 90 seconds to do it. Radio interview and hack. They, and and they want. One. Go ahead. Give one. Radio interview hack for comics. Here you go. Listen to the show before you get to the station. Yep. Mm. Take something they said, get your joke together about it, lead with it, and then run it. Call, start hard. with that joke. Make it look You're like, calling back to the previous, oh, wow, he likes us. Yeah, you're, into, yeah. you're into what we're into? Yeah, I don't Whoa. give a fuck about you, sir. Yeah. I'm trying to sell this show. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, I care and about And they don't give a fuck about you. Either. To me, the most, the best is two. It's two that I think just, they should teach a class on this shit. Bruce Bruce. 
and Lavelle Crawford. Mm. Yes. Lavelle Crawford used to do what we call a pushback interview, where you would introduce him at the break. Ladies and gentlemen, in the studio with us, he had to start on fucking Lavelle Crawford. And you're gone. Push back from the table. Five and that minutes. motherfucker will run for three minutes straight. <laughs> and you ain't got to say a word. Just laugh. Because he's got his shit. And he's going for Dexter angry. Topic to topic to topic to topic to topic. Because he knows that's what you got to do in the mornings to fucking wake people up. Them phone lines will be lighting the fuck up. Man, look at that crazy as hell. Yeah. Tell Roy Wood he still ain't shit. <laughs> 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 Roy. We ain't forgot, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on your ass. I'm in New York right now. But you got to give it up. You, you, you left you, your hat, nigga. You, <laughs> dirty you brim, nigga. Hat, nigga. <laughs> I'm in the parlor right now. Your hat is in the back, nigga. But you, you, throw you, started, you started killing them on the radio, though, because um, that character you used to do is Dr. Uh, what's his Dr. name? Dr. Zebo. Dr. Zebo was the funniest shit, and you was calling niggas live on the radio as Dr. Zebo. And I don't know what's up with black people. We will argue with an African dude. A long time. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you know what's wild about radio, especially black radio, man? Like, so much of that humor is just rooted in stereotypes and just that being the instant thing. Or, like, I used to do this white character and was very, like, Ricky would do a redneck, and I did a guy named Brian Stevenson. And <laughs> the idea with Brian Stevenson was to call black people and make you feel like you are inferior to me. Mm. Hmm. Oh. And then I would, and that's all I would do. Like they would say shit, and I would just go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just trigger us. And, and just, just no that. All the trauma. That's enough. You know and then, then I would fucking hit them. I'd say, you know, uh, your tone is just not appropriate right now. And I'm not sure if I My think we can tone. come to something amicable. Maybe you should give me the respect that a white man is due. Oh. And I tell you, it's fireworks the beat after button. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's firework and like that's all you're trying to do in a prank call. I'm yeah. just trying to get you to just, you're just trying to draw the foul, right? <laughs> I'm that's saying it. whatever <laughs> the fuck. You've had a couple of people want like wanting to fight you or whatever. Like, you, you prank call a couple of famous people, right? right. Motherfucker pulled up. <laughs> Who um, pulled up on you? Man, motherfucker man. pulled up on me in Cleveland. I wanted to beat my ass, Jay Prince. I read that on oh, Twitter. Oh, Can you please yeah, tell Jay that story? Prince story please. I would love to hear it oh. live. Cause I read the whole thread yeah, on Twitter. It doesn't put you in any danger. We don't no, we're good. <laughs> yeah. right. nah, nah, he put, he put yeah. it on Twitter. No, 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 um, um, uh, Sway. Yeah, Sway had me call him. Sway set up a parlay. Like, okay. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like on that, that was necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, the Culture yeah. Ricans need yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. So, so I do the prank phone calls. So I start selling CDs. This backstory is important. I just feel like a long ass story, but it's important we to understand how I get to Texas with this shit. So. I'm on my third prank call CD, and them shits is moving. And you know there was a black record store, music and more. I got a shout out to uh, Mr. Rashid and everybody over there because they were the ones like the black stores that would carry our shit on consignment. And once you start moving units in the black owned store, then that's when Sam Goody and Camelot and everybody else started fucking with me. And so my shit was in stores all over the state. That's hard. So that gave me enough juice to get on with the homie uh, T.J. Chapman. Um, record producer down in Tallahassee. And so TJ Chapman does a record pool. And so at this record pool, like back in the day, before the internet and shit, <laughs> back in the day, DJs, and they still do it now, but a lot more of the stuff is done through the internet. But all the record DJs in the South, all of the club DJs, all the radio DJs that break records, excuse me, they get together at a club every quarter and they play records from their region for everybody. We play records from, I play a record for you, you play a record for me, and if I like it, I'll go, and that's how music, that's how black music spreads around the South. That's hard. So this is around the time when comedy and hip hop still had a good relationship. Like this is back when like K-Dub and Lil Duval was Shorty in everybody's was in everybody videos. Else. Yeah, Shorty was in everybody's videos. Bringing back that 90s vibe when comedians really had a stranglehold. Doing, D-Ray was doing sketches for Kanye yeah. and all, it was yes. that era. And so- AJ Johnson, rest in peace. Yeah. So sure. I go, fuck it. I want to do sketches like that. I want to do skits like that. So I go down to the record pool in Tallahassee. I put my prank call CD in everybody's grab bag. It's like 500 people in the club. I'm just going around the club, put my shit in grab bags. Some nigga from Texas take my shit back, put it on the Pimp C mixtape. So Damn. I prank calls on the Pimp C mixtape, which is love. That gets the attention of a local record label in Houston. Then they're thinking about fucking with me. Somehow the CDs end up in Chameleonaire's fucking camp. And Chameleonaire, man, I like 
That's one of them niggas that's in your life that you know you can never pay back. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know how you have people right. in your life that did you a solid so good. They don't even fucking know how fucking good it was for you. Mm. Ain't that, like, I saw the nigga courtside of the Warriors game. I was like, I can't help him. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's good. Just get a, he just He's get good. a hug. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. 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 Silicon Valley like in the front. Yeah. Yeah. Get in here, man. Right. So Chameleon Air starts putting my CD, starts putting my pranks on his mixtape Messiah CDs, like three, four, four like every fucking six, seven months, my prank wow. calls on these CDs. And so that gets the attention of a local record label in Houston. They call me and they go, yo, we want to do a prank call CD where you do nothing but prank call celebrities. And we know all the celebrities, it'll be mostly Houston folk, but we think if it does well, we saw your sales numbers at Sam Goody, Camelot, whatever. We'll get you regional distribution. So I'm like, oh, bet. This is a fucking dope deal. Legit. So you do Texas celebrities first. And then if that do well, then you get the nationals. So they say fly down. So I fly down like on fucking Tuesday or Wednesday morning. And I land. I go straight to the studio. And, and they got the contract. I signed the contract. And they got the list of people that they want me to prank. And it's, you know, it's Chameleon Air, Vince Young at the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Like Mike Jones. Right. Who? Um, <laughs> I think Steve Francis was still with Brand the Rockets. Child. Like it was just Houston, was Houston, Houston type people. Yeah. So another person on the list was Jay Prince, CEO of Rap a Lot Records. If OG in the game. Absolutely. Check out that interview too. Damn, got him. So, the way I do prank calls, like when I'm doing them at the station, was you do the hardest person first so that the rest of your day is easy. You don't want to do the hardest call when you're exhausted. You Makes want that sense. person when you're fresh. Right. So, I go, let's start with Jay Prince. Yes, let's do that. Because he seems like the, like, and all I know of Jay Prince is fucking Ghetto Boy album intros. Oh, that's what? scary enough. And, but, <laughs> I mean. but you know how he talks very slow <laughs> yeah. yep. and methodical. Yes. So exactly what could you do to <laughs> anger mm. a man that is this still? So Talk that's what I'm figuring out. Talk yeah. slower to him, nigga. <laughs> 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 Bruh, he would pass out. So, <laughs> so the, the fucking the producer and the fucking engineer they know Jay. They've done deals with him. This is them to me. Oh, yeah, he's a good guy. Loves a good joke. Uh, <laughs> loves a good joke. joke. This is where the culture disconnect is at. I know James. I, that should have been the, oh, first, oh, the first flag. The first flag. You know, when they call you. you, you call, yeah, I call him Jay. Mr. Jay. Yeah, Sir yeah, Jay. Prince. <laughs> don't know this man like I talk about. Big brother. Oh, Rap all great. It. He's great. Let's call him. So I call Jay. And again, like you said, we ran with the doctor, uh, the doctor Azebo. So I was like, all right, if he's low key, I'm gonna go high, and we just, you know, create the comedy of contrast. Mm -hmm. So you down here, I'm up here. You talk slow, I talk fast and loud, and that's gonna be the fucking game. And I called Jay Prince, and I told him that I owned a record store in Houston, and that. All right, so the way you get people upset, right, <laughs> is you have to attack things that they love. Things that they Period. cherish. Your children, your wife, oh, your car, your looks, anything that you have created. If you are a wedding planner, I will say you didn't plan the wedding. If you do cakes, I will say your cakes taste disgusting. Mm -hmm. If you are a rap CEO, I will tell you your rappers are trash. They do not sell well. Come to my store and pick up these garbage <laughs> ass CDs. <laughs> so you went there? Prince, oh my God. 30 seconds in, we're already, we taxied <laughs> out, we gone. You about to be dead. You took off. <laughs> 30, 30 seconds, 90 seconds in. They tracking the cost. Start seeing lasers on your shoulder <laughs> and shit. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you motherfucker, come here and get these CDs. I can't do the accent no more. <laughs> we're in different times. But, uh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said you didn't know how. You mean, like, I don't want to. He don't want that. He don't want to run that bitch back on that, that playback. Gonna be crazy. Jordan, so, so, 
Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm attacking this man. I'm like, these rappers is terrible. I ain't sold no rap a lot albums in two years. And then I just start naming rappers from his roster and why they are trash oh. and why each album is oh trash God. and why did you right. sign him? I almost him. don't want you to say yeah. that. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, he's they press press mark this dot net. Mark jump. this part. For real? He has someone, yeah. he has someone watching our show ever since he's been on <laughs> Shout so, out to Jay Prince Jr., man. Yeah, please. So <laughs> all the princes, the whole prince family. Jazz Prince, all y'all are great people. Fresh Prince. All <laughs> we got two sons, though. Princess Fried Chicken in Nashville. Nashville. <laughs> prince Hakeem. Prince Hakeem and Rakeem Jr. Prince Roger Nelson. All of them. The artist formerly known as. Whew. Okay. So I'm pop, 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 First one of the day. That's crazy. And now... You would expect a rise out of him at this point, because I've hit him with fucking everything, dog. He just goes, where you at? (laughs) I am nowhere. That's all he said, first of all. Cold, calm. And I'm like, what do you mean where I'm at? Well, you say you want me to come get the records from your (laughs) record shop. I got to know where you at to get the records. Bruh. Where you at? <laughs> Where you at? That's scary. Whew. Yeah, I'm, I'm it sound eerie. Engineer starts shaking. <laughs> <laughs> he don't know James. <laughs> <laughs> the engineer, the engineer starts shaking. He's like. <laughs> do not tell him where we at. Because I'm looking at them like, do I keep going? Y'all yeah. the one said y'all knew him. Like, 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 bro. They deleted yeah. your record contract right there. They deleted that bitch. I said, I said, motherfucker, where you at? Right. <laughs> Come meet you. I'm going to send them to you. <laughs> oh, this is business, and I respect business, and I'm a business man, and I don't do business on the phone. Mm-hmm. So where you at? Shit making me scared. Right. Man. He sound like the turtle from Never in the Story. <laughs> right. I ain't got my gun with nah. me. We had a different studio. A tray. You. So. I'm scared. The the other dude, the producer, and this is the, the guy that run the label or whatever. He comes in the fucking he comes in the booth, and push me out the way. Hey 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 Jay, uh, it's us it's us over here at the record label. We're, we're just we're just pranking this. This is Roy. He's a comedian. Uh, we were just pranking you. We just thought it would be funny. Uh, sorry if we interrupted your day. And Jay go, who is this? <laughs> At least he got it off of you. Yeah, no, he finna, he, but the white boy about to tell. Yeah, I can yeah, tell. I ain't gonna say the white boy real name, but the yeah. white boy was like, uh, "This, this is Oliver, man. It's Oliver over there." Oh, you over there with Oliver? <laughs> <laughs> Direct location. I right? know exactly where you at. Hey, man, turn the car around. What? Click, Bruh. Engineer leaves the room. <laughs> <laughs> I would have left. Texas. Come on, man. Let me get so, on the I turn to Oliver. I go, are we good? <laughs> I'm like, no. I would have. Yeah, man. He nope. knew it was a prank. And so, just if we just talking legal protocol, I like to call people back and try to make sure shit is square. Because this was after the dude that ran up on me in Cleveland. So, I'm trying to like, if I've gotten you too upset, I should call you back and deliver a personal apology. Jay wouldn't answer the phone. So I turned to Oliver. I go, are we good, dog? I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, no. Um, Mm-mm. Yeah. No. Nope. Why don't we call Vince Young? Let's call Vince Young. No, you want me to do keep keep working? Working? You no, crazy, sir. boy. I'm, I'm out. I said, I said, Young is in how college. fast can I get to I said, dog, and, 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 that's, and that's when you got to, like, <laughs> look out for yourself and yeah. figure out. Am I really in danger in this moment? Because I can't trust their barometer. No, man. As soon as he said, I know exactly where you at. He's cool. You so already- that's the problem is that they have a barometer. You need a negrometer. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah, they're fucking with Barry and Oliver. <laughs> right. Yeah. So in the back of my head, I'm thinking of all the different ways this can go wrong. Now, they've booked my hotel, so they also know where I'm staying. And I ain't got a lot of money. They gonna you give know. you up. Yes. I was like, oh, I can't yeah. stay at the hotel that they fucking. They give me up. I said, and they booked the flight. Ooh. And you know, 
Yeah, I went back to the airport, bro, and I fucking bought a same day ticket. Mm. Last this, bit. This is how long ago this was. It was Continental first, Airlines. First Continental was before they merged with United. I bought a fucking IAH <laughs> to BHM and went the fuck back to Birmingham. I was in Houston a total of four hours. Man, that nigga was on the plane with a cigarette. Like, well, God damn, they almost <laughs> had me. Continental did have ashtrays. <laughs> <what I'm> <laughs> so, so that was that. And I was like, yeah, I'll come back and do the album another time. I never returned. Of course. Yeah, to this day, I, I owe them a print call. <laughs> nigga ain't never been a text. <laughs> so it so never released. Fast for, no, that was the only call and I left. Yeah. Ain't no album. So, they didn't, okay. So it wasn't that on, No, we deleted that file okay, right there in the room. Yeah, that does happened. not exist, though. Got it, got it, got it. I watched the engineer del- I like, delete it. Now go to the recycle bin yeah. and delete, delete that bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man. Restart your computer, matter of fact. So fast forward to when he was on Sway. Give me the computer. And this is when I... <laughs> walking through the airport with it. Oh, dick, nigga. Uh, put it in the trunk. <laughs> Throw that bitch off the roof. <laughs> so fast forward to Jay Prince's autobiography comes. His memoir comes mm-hmm. out. And he's on the tour promoting the memoir. And so this I told that story because I figured enough time had passed. It's two years ago, right? Yeah, yeah two, three years ago when the <laughs> memoir came out. Yes. But this story was like... Oh five, then whatever the fuck Vince Young was playing the Texas. Yeah. So Sway asked Jay about the prank call and asked Jesus him if he remembered Sway. it. And he asked Jay, he goes, were you really headed to the fucking studio? And Jay told Sway, and I quote, I just wanted to laugh with him. Shit. <laughs> Boy, he want to skin you alive. Shit. <laughs> if you's a comedian, Let's laugh together. Mm-mm. At gunpoint. Excuse me, Mr. Prince. That ain't how. <laughs> do your Mr. whole Prince, that's hour. Not how, that's not how comedy works. works. <laughs> yeah. I do the jokes, do y'all laugh. Do your first special right Choosing there. Choosing comedy as a career and leaving Houston that day are two decisions that I will stand beside for the rest of my life. <laughs> two of the best choices I've yeah. ever made. I'm surprised made. you asked twice was y'all good. First of all, as soon as he said, what, what, what? He'd have seen the back of my jacket. What, what, what? <laughs> Yeah, them pranks, man. That Ooh, shit is fucking So you said you were in Cleveland, home. though? Just Some, a fan? Dude, no. His son was jacking off in class, and I told him that your son taught my son how to jack off. <laughs> ain't no man playing with their son like that either. But, that, but that's what really happened. <laughs> Not my boy. That's what really happened, though. His son got caught playing with his dick in class. And got suspended. Oh, this is a real story. Yeah, like all the, yeah, all my pranks were from people in the family. That's how I got off the hook. Most oh of the time. my god! So that's oh, why you would man. engage me because I knew too much. Knew, I knew boy, too many facts. what the fuck? Who? Yeah. Which one of his family members? T- Told Nigga, he owe yeah. money to nigga mama gave it up. His mama gave it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finna call this Roy Wood New- Jr. nigga that bombed in Apollo. He gonna make it right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let me speak so to So were they in Birmingham? How did no, they get to Cleveland? No, this is in Cleveland. He was in Cleveland. At this point, my pranks had expanded. Like, they were going viral. This is back when you go viral over email. So I was getting prank oh, requests man. from people all over the country. And at that point in Birmingham, everybody knew my voice. Yeah. So I couldn't call nobody in Bur- at the crib no more. So I well, had to start you? fucking. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I had to start calling people from out of town. And so the problem with the out of town is, is because you don't know me and I don't have a relationship with you or the city. Dick. You ain't letting the shit go once yeah. I once I let you off the hook. You call somebody from Birmingham, they know what it is. Oh, you got me. I laugh at that. It was my turn to get got. You call a nigga from Cleveland and you say, Yes, your son taught my boy how to jack off overhand and underhand. Ah. How oh boy, and I'm gonna miss it. Shit. Yeah. Bruh. Yeah. In class, he a cold <laughs> nigga. <laughs> he doing this in class, he a cold nigga. So, so. So I told this nigga to come meet me at the PTA meeting. <laughs> oh, Lord. And this motherfucker got in the car and left the house <laughs> to go to the school. There was no PTA meeting. <laughs> that was his first time at the school, too. Hilarious. His first PTA so, Where you go to school at? <laughs> where you go to school at? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he don't know, know shit about his son. That's why he jacked off his school. Right, nigga. Get your attention, nigga. <laughs> where you go to school at? What what page 15 at? on, Miss Woods. <laughs> shit, bitch. <laughs> Oh, that makes you. So that, I tried to do prank calls, and I, I only did one successful. But we, we, th- we, it's a tape Hold somewhere. Hold on, Ronnie. Hold on, he won't finish the story. I know. <laughs> so, so I fucking, I, I call him back to let him off the hook. He won't answer. So we get his wife to call. He answers, smooths it out, figure everything's sweet. Three months later, I'm at the improv in the flats, 
and I do my show at the Cleveland Improv. Mm -hmm. Normal show, same old same. Go out to the merch table, sell my CDs, shaking hands, shaking hands. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for coming out. Just one dude shook my hand and just yanked me in. He did. I oh. bet he did. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, overhand or underhand? Overhand. <laughs> <laughs> he just yanked you, Roy. Okay. Yeah, he did. They're yeah. a family of yankers. <laughs> <laughs> the great yankers. Yankers. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's funny. So, Yankee doodle. Nigga grabbed like the handshake with the twist and pull. Uh. Underhand. It was underhand. underhand. He got all the tricks. <laughs> all the tricks. And then he just <laughs> leaned in. He leaned in and go, this just so you know, if I wanted to touch you, I could touch you. Ugh. What? <laughs> Don't you ever call my motherfucking phone again, nigga. And fucking push me away. Like, on some, it was rough. <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> but no lotion. <laughs> but like, it was an aggressive, like, push off. Like, like. That nigga fell in the back like, oh, shit. But I couldn't even be mad at this shit. Nah, it's like, yeah, I... Yeah. Did, but you smoothed it out. I ain't no fighting ass nigga, man. Nah, nah, but you could have ripped the shirt. It, also... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can fight with a, a nipple out. Also, I still got another night <laughs> of shows. Tyson. Mike Tyson's the only nigga, but you ain't gonna rip his shirt. Are you crazy? <laughs> also, you can't fight a nigga on a Friday when you still got Saturday shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a rematch. Like you gotta fight. If you gonna fight a motherfucker, you gotta fight right, on the man. last day. Right. That's when you fight. You go straight hey, to the airport. On. We, we ain't gonna wrap it up. We, we could pause. Oh, if you need to like change something, do it because this shit is good. All right.